Class. Afternoon. Sorry about that. Some technical difficulties on the brother. What's up, my brother? Technical difficulties. Raymond. What's up, my brother? How you doing? Man, I am running around. Man, I've been rolling all day, man. <laughs> I just got out of a meet, man. Are we live already? I'll just let you know. Okay. I just got out of a meet with a guy putting together software, man. Mm -hmm. He's awesome, man. He put together software where, like, whatever we want to be in the software, he's putting it together. As far as we want probate leads to pop up in there, we want expired listens. He fired with that data, man. he been doing it about 20 years, so we just got out of meeting with him, man. He's wow, he can scrub it. Man, it's ridiculous. Man. He already been starting on this so far, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, that is some powerful data right there. Is it coast to coast or just in the A? It's just in the A for now. But yeah. then, you know, once he get the rolling, I told him, you know, we got to hook up, get this thing around. Because this, I may partner with him so we can bring it out like a software. Yeah. And we sell it to a lot of people. Yeah, man, I'd be interested in something like that. Yeah. That's sharp, man. Brother Eddie. What's up, class. my brother? Welcome, class. Chris Haskins. It's your boy, Chris Haskins. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I always wanted to say that. Hanging out with brother, transaction engineer. Oh, Daniel, thank you, dog. <laughs> Daniel, always important, man. Thank you, my brother. Daniel, in the Daniel. building. What's up, Daniel? Class, you know my ministry, my mission. What do you think about my new board, Eddie? I'm blowing up. Hell yeah, I like that man. Yeah, you got that little baby, that little kid version down, man. We got that big boy lead down, baby. Woo! My boy that came up. <laughs> you, be, you be stretching me to the mat. You stretching me to the max. Man, yeah, boy, that looks good, man. So now I can get it We got plenty of stuff to put on that. <laughs> plenty. <laughs> My mission, my ministry class is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Today, we're going to be going over how to wholesale lease options with brother, Mr. Transaction Engineer. Good day to you, my friend. How you doing, brother? Oh, hey, man. I feel like Tony the Tiger. Great! I like that, man. I like that. Remember, I talked to you this morning, class. I always like to give you something to stretch your mind. Ha! Ah! Something to stretch your mind, Eddie. I put both of our emails in the video description. I put the link to your course, Eddie, down at the bottom. They're going to be get, they can actually get some of this stuff. Actually, what we're going to cover today is going to be in your course as well, correct, Eddie? Correct, correct. So a lot of that stuff, the documents is in the course, but I want Eddie to just be able to pour today. And I'm going to be doing a YouTube master class tomorrow at two o'clock class. I had an applicant come in. You know, I get a lot of applications for my rental property, right, Eddie? Right. I got an application today, man. The brother, I'm going to show it tonight at 8.30. I'm going to go live to show you this application. The man has been bouncing around jobs. He's 50. His birthday is 1969. And he's making $10 an hour, Eddie. Man, it just kind of kind of, kind of got to me, my friend. How old is he? His birthday was 1969, so he's 50. 50 years old. Shit. Making $10 an hour? Yeah, could you imagine? That's a hard pill to swallow, man. <laughs> God, man. I think I called you as soon as I saw that app this morning. Eddie. I mean, he wasn't playing, he wasn't playing the money game to win, man. He was doing like everybody else. The follow the herd mentality. You said you that. Know, go to school, get a job, and work in the system every time. Mm, and mm. live happily ever after. But that's over with, man. Inflation has killed that, man. Does that even Inflation exist? Does that exist anymore, Eddie? I, I'm so far out of it. Well, I know my wife does well. Yeah, but just think about it, Chris. If if it, if you weren't in her life, she didn't have any investments, and she just oh, had to look shit. forward to retiring. Yeah, what is she gonna eat, man? You come on, the average mortgage. Now, if a person got a free and clear house, then they'll be okay. But you got a mortgage, you got a car note, man. You got groceries. You in trouble, man. You can't retire like that. That's why you see a lot of people sixty years.
the old traditional way of thinking that you need to be paying off your house and paying off your car. But when you get 50 or 60, you know, at least you're debt free and you can try to live off the little social security check you're going to get. Wow. Boy, that, that, man, that's stressful, man. I want to take a shot for him. I wish I had something to drink right now. <laughs> I can't imagine, Eddie. You know what I think about when I wake up? I'm like, I could. what would I do if I had to depend on my efforts to pay my bills? You know, the efforts of my back. Like, and there are only eight hours in the day. That, well, I'm sorry, the 24 hours a day. So many hours you can work, Eddie. Right. Right? Even if you worked every hour of the day. I mean, can, can you really get ahead working harder? Uh, I don't think so. You'll be stressed in the hospital, man. Yeah. But, and then you got to think, what time is your uh, health? What time? Um, what is it? You got to take care of your health in the process. Yeah. Darren, you cutting out, Eddie? Yeah, you got to include that into. So I'm, you broke up, Eddie. You said you said something about your health. Back up. You cut out. I said you got to include. You got to make sure you take care of your health too. You got to include that into the um, plan, working out and all that stuff and eating right. And it's kind of hard to do, man. When you working jobs, some people got like two or three jobs. Mm -hmm. You eating fast food, eating all that crap, man. Oh my goodness! It's a balance, man. You gotta have a balance. Wow, Eddie, I'm just like a. <laughs> I've got a small chip on my shoulder, dude. I just want people around me to be wealthy. You know, maybe I want more for them than they want for themselves. I don't know. I, we got to share this information, Eddie. We got to share it, dog. Yeah, man. We got to bless them. But I mean, even if they did only Let's do four, one five of these, four or five of these transactions a year, man, you know, that'll be, that'll help them. I'm just like, if they did one a year, Eddie, do they need to do four or five? I mean, you're making 20 extra thousand. If you took all the money from the deal you did and just paid off a mortgage, I mean, you would be, oh my goodness. Because I'm like, one yeah. main, if you got a property, man, that's one main thing you could do. If you got a property, you don't have no investments, come or no money coming in from nowhere else. The best advice I can give you, man, pay your house off. You daggone right. At around. least that major. Expense is gone. Pay your house off in your car. Wow. At least the house is the major expense. So you get that paid off, man. It's going to free you up mentally. So if you do retire at 60 or 65, you don't have that big payment over your head, man. Yeah, I got you. What the? I don't mean to go too deep, but class, I'm doing a YouTube and internet marketing master class tomorrow too. You can register for it today. It's going to cost you as much as a tank of gas if you register today. You know, so um, Eddie, I got to get you that link too to share it out, man, for your for your viewers, Eddie. God, man, okay. we learn, brother Eddie. Wholesale and lease options. Ta da! Wholesale and lease options, man. I love so that. everybody caught up in the rec normal traditional wholesale. I still wholesale ugly houses. We getting a nice lick tomorrow. Um, what a 16, 16 off of ugly house. Mm -hmm. But you got a lot of people. You know, they're doing the same thing. <laughs> but you got a big open market with the pretty houses, man. Nobody's messing with the pretty houses too much. I barely see competition. I'm going to be honest with you. Because everybody's so caught up in the hype. You know, everybody, a lot of people got to follow the herd mentality. So people running to renovate and running to wholesale houses because that's the new thing now. So everybody's running to do that. HGTV. Hey, I'm right. not mad with them now. I, I, I like them leaving me all the money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not arguing, guys. Thank you. <laughs> they go that money go right to HIP, H I P, Pocket National Bank. The best place for the money to go to. <laughs> so Eddie, I know in ugly houses we're we're getting a discount based on the condition of the property, but that's not the value that pretty houses are bringing because the condition is good. Where is the value on the pretty houses that you're looking for? Well, the value what we're looking for something that need you know no more than five grand in repairs, no more than about five thousand in repairs. Minor repairs. Minor stuff. We're not going in. We don't. We don't want anything that new, need new granite countertops, and all kind of stuff, major stuff, um, bathroom renovations, and all that kind of stuff. 
Mm-hmm. We're not looking for none of this stuff. We look for something that is dang near moving and ready. Nice, nice. So the value, and let me ask, let me ask you just so I can, because I, I want to paint a picture to get a framework for our viewers, our family members. Once again, the value in the ugly house is the repairs. You're you're bringing looks. You're bringing as is. You do no repairs. We take off all the mold, asbestos, all that crap with ugly houses. But the pretty houses is more of a debt situation. Is that what we're kind of looking for? And more of a motivation. They just want to kind of move on with no equity. Right. And some people have equity. They may want all of their equity instead of listening with a listening to property with a realtor. You know, they may want to you know, get all their money when somebody buy it in the future. So yeah. by us putting a tenant buyer in the property, you know, that takes away the realtor fees. Because normally, if, if you list the property, you know, you're dealing with 6 to 7%. So now the homeowner get to keep that 6 to 7% in their pocket. And the fee oh. we make doesn't affect the seller in oh any way. So they still will net their bottom line. I like we're going to raise our price on the back end to cover our fee. I like that, Eddie. I like that. So they're paying no, the, the value is to the, to the seller. They don't even pay realtor fees. Right. I like that. Well, that's value you're and building. Guess what? We buy it as is most of the time. Because, you know, normally when you list the property, I know FHA, you can't have no more than about 500 in repairs. So this way, the seller do not have to come out of the pocket and, you know, do any major repairs or anything to the property because our tenant buyer is taking the property as is. Gotcha. They're taking the whole responsibility of home ownership, looking to buy it in the future. Mm -hmm. Now, I had a student that um, he was a little concerned. He was he was doing a subject two takeover. Now subject two takeover, we don't really care what kind of tenant we put in the property. As long as you know they got a good pay history and a large down payment, you qualify. Mm-hmm. Now the lease purchase wholesale lease option, we're putting the property on the contract with the right. Well, well, okay, the wholesale lease option, we're putting the property on the contract and we're locating the tenant buyer for our seller. So we're in and out. We're not in the standing in the middle of nothing like that. We're in and out of the transaction. So, hey, they got a buyer. They got a buyer that's looking to buy. Now, when you're doing a wholesale lease option, you kind of want to be a little picky because you want to your seller's looking to cash out. Mm-hmm. So whether he give you a one year lease or a two year lease, he's looking to cash out. And so you're going to look for somebody who's kind of close to being able to qualify. Of course, you don't want to pull in everybody, so you're going to put no credit check and all that good stuff because you want to pull in a lot of people and pre-screen them. But you want to get the best person with the credit, the best credit or who's close to getting qualified for a loan for yourself. Gotcha. Because you want to get them cast out in the future. You want to get them cast out however, however long you have a um, lease with that seller or however long that seller is going to give you to put that tenant in there. So, the seller give you one year, then you need to be looking for somebody who can get qualified within a year, put them in a good credit repair program, find some. And I know a couple of people, so just let me know. Email me or Chris, and I'll hook you guys up. But you want to be able to pre-screen them properly and get them cashed out if you can. That way you can keep, you know, keep good face with the seller. Okay, so right. I'm, let me paint this picture. We're buying, because, you know, in real estate, I always got my analogy on my fence. You got to make sure you're buying on one side of the fence and selling on the other side of the fence. A lot of right. times we don't buy like we sell, you know. So we're buying on a lease option when we're wholesaling lease options. Is that is that correct? Correct. But we're selling actually on a wholesale assignment contract, so to speak. Right. We're going to sign our rights over to the end buyer. Nice. All right. We'll get to those moving parts in a minute, my friend. Thank you, Eddie. Dropping that wisdom. Dropping that wisdom. So, when the when you're negotiating with your seller, Eddie, some of the things now when the things that you're negotiating is no realtor fee. What makes you want to do a lease option as opposed to buying it on a subject two and owning it yourself? Well, me personally, you know, we want to take it over subject two first. 
everybody's different. You're saying right, but if they don't go to the subject to, then we'll do the lease purchase. I mean, at least we can get paid. So is this seller typically someone that has already tried to sell their house or are they a person that is in the market to lease it? It could be both. Somebody who's already tried to sell and some people who's looking to rent their property. But let's be realistic. How many people really want to deal with a tenant, especially if they're not in the business of dealing with tenants? So most people would rather sell than lease it, rent it out or lease it out. But you would come to them with this strategy hey they like it man yeah i'm like i'm a i'm a master real estate investor and i don't want to deal with tenants eddie right and we tell them you know with, with our contracts we get you know we let them use our contract we let them know hey we put this tenant buyer in the property they're responsible for the repairs you're not responsible for repairs the only thing they're going to call you for is to give you your money i like that does it now, just think about that guy no repairs don't have to talk to a tenant except when it's time to collect money don't have to um do any repairs to get the property ready to sell realtor fee come on man no realtor fee so they're happy man yeah that ain't too Most bad are happy. so we're buying it we've got it tied up I, I just want to make sure i get this picture painted eddie we've bought it on the lease option The, your seller has signed your lease option. Right. Now, how are we linking up our new tenant buyer? Tenant buyer. To take over this this paper right here. What are we how are we getting our tenant buyer to take over this lease option that you're already in? Well, by the assignment. All right. Is that something we can share with our family members today, Brother Eddie? Yes, sir. I love it. My pen is drying out, Eddie. I'll be right. My, I gotta get a new pen, dog. I know they go out, man, like crazy. <laughs> These things ain't work. They need to make some better ones, man. Honestly, they dry in seconds. It might be a little scheme they got going on, so you can keep it fast. <laughs> hey, they good for about five uses. <laughs> Then it's a wrap. So look, guys, you wholesaling, bring in wholesale lease options, guys. You see the checks you make on wholesaling, that's fine. But now you can double it with wholesale lease options. Now you get paid twice. Being a real estate investor, you wanna, you gotta know, guys, more than one transaction. Oh my one way of doing business, man. Because if you only stuck on one route, so well, much only fun. wholesaling. Or it's only doing rehabs, or if it's only buying subject tools, or it's only doing wholesale lease option, you're doing a disservice to yourself and to your uh, clients. Because I'm quite sure you guys got um, leads in and they don't fit uh, Mayo, Maximal Alpha criteria, but you done threw the, threw the um, leads away. That's probably money you're throwing away. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hit it, Eddie. You got you take the reins on this one because I I do more new construction renovations and stuff. I'm I'm definitely want to see how this goes down. Okay, let me. Um... So we're linking up, class. If you're just joining us, this is Chris hanging out with brother Eddie. We're going over wholesaling lease options. We've locked down the deal. We've already covered why the tenant buyer wants to do that. No, I'm sorry, the seller would do this. No renovations. I'm, I'm, no renovations they have to do, no road to feed, no closing costs. We take care of all that. And they get the most for their property. So we've got the lease option. Eddie has gone in, negotiated with that. Now he's going to sell that to his tenant buyer for a down payment. <clears throat> and he's gone. This is Eddie, let me ask you, is this the same thing for my viewers that um, are just maybe getting a little foggy? Is this the same thing as a sandwich lease option? No, it's not. It's not the same. Tell us. Sandwich lease option. Sam's lease option, you're standing to you stand in the deal. Okay, this deal we get out. We're this deal we're in and out, guys. The only thing we're doing, let me close this up. Yeah. The only thing we're doing, guys, is finding the tenant buyer for the seller or for the homeowner. We just locate a tenant buyer 
And we always showed them like the top two or three candidates and we let them pick just in case it mm. doesn't work out. They can say, oh, you gave me the bullshit tenant. Mm. No, you picked them, Mr. Seller. So, hey, you got to deal with them. We don't have to worry about any calls or any, none of that stuff. That is a so very we, good nugget there, Eddie. Yeah, we let them pick out the top. The top, right, we give them two or three and you pick the best one you like. We send them over the rental application. Now, that's one thing we also do, too. We run a background. We run all the checks for ourselves. So we send them over all the checks, you know, the background check and all that stuff, The um, how much they can pay. <clears throat> like, we put together, like, a little package. And we send it to them, to them over in email and, hey, you pick. Nice. Right. That, that takes you off the hook. Uh, kind of, like, takes you off the hook a little bit, my friend. Yeah, that's what I like. I don't want to be responsible because you can't make anybody buy, man. Mm -mm. I mean, Force life sale. happens. A person may like the neighborhood one minute, but in six months they're in the neighborhood and they decide they don't even like the neighborhood so they can move. <laughs> and that's one benefit to the buyer, you know. The, but the deposit is non-refundable. So if they decide not to buy, then they lose their money. And we let them know that before they get into the deal. So Nice. nice. And I, we haven't had any problem with people. Uh, mad about losing the money. Most of them just move out. I'm, I'm like, wow. <laughs> I'm amazed at how much money people will walk away from, my friend. Right. That's something. What's the most you've had a person walk away from? I know how much it is for me, but how about you? Um, uh, thirty thousand. You didn't beat me. The most thirty thousand. That house. Remember the house you contacted me off of? Ah, uh, yeah, that was a beautiful house. Yeah, I love that one, man. God. Rest in peace, though, my boy Floyd. It was an older gentleman. He was like 82 years old. And the crazy thing, man, um, the seller, the seller was like, what if the man died before I buy the house? Because she was in it for two years. I'm like, man, he's not going to die. But he died, man, before uh, she bought the house. I hate he died because the man was really cool. His wife was the complete opposite. So when the seller couldn't buy, when she couldn't buy, man, the wife was raising hell. And, you know, she was proud. So it blew the, it blew it for us, but if the husband was around, he would have gave another year easily. Yeah, I think I had most. I've had walk away with twenty five thousand, Eddie. I mean, they just and that that came from my tenant buyer's father, so I knew it wasn't out of her pocket. Oh, she definitely didn't care. And they were gone. <laughs> they were gone. We took the house back, sold it again. All right. I know, man. So let's get, let's get here to this. Such a terrible thing. <laughs> Daniel, thank you once again, my friend. Thank you, Daniel. Was lacing us today. Go ahead, brother Eddie. So, um, to get out of this my screen. screen. Uh, yep, hit it. Just take your mouse and screw to the left there. Let me see. Class, while he's getting ready, while he's getting ready, don't forget all this data. Eddie's course is below. The link to our YouTube masterclass internet marketing is the link is below class below tomorrow. We're gonna drop it on you. I'm pulling back the curtains. I'm sick and tired of beating ten dollar an hour workers who want to move in my rental properties. I want to want to get them paid too. Shit, I want them to make some money too. Thank you. I mean, it's so much money out here, man. So many opportunities. The only thing stop everybody is excuses and themselves and themselves. But the biggest thing is the mind, man. You got to get your mind right. Mm -hmm. Stop hanging around them bones, man. <laughs> Can you see it now, Chris? Hanging around I see it, but yeah, get me off of there, though. Oh, you can see yourself? I see that damn car, yeah. Oh, oh it's taking a minute to upload. Okay. Can you see it now? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So now this is our application receipt. We use this right here, guys. This is for, um, we get all this information. So this one, we got somebody that's ready to buy. Somebody's ready to buy, you know, they want to put down their earnest money for mm -hmm. us to hold the property and take it off the market. We do not, and I'm going to keep, I'm going to make sure y'all listen to this real thoroughly. Zoom in a little bit. Wow. Zoom in just a touch. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What's up? What's, what'd you say, Chris? Zoom in just a touch, but go ahead. Do not, um, oh, shit. wrong way, my brother. <laughs> there you go. Do not take your house off the market, guys, until it's sold. Mm. 
I don't again. care what the Good person God. say. I don't care what they say. This is close up for you guys who want to try to get you a little quickie in. <laughs> <laughs> Do not take that house off the market until it's sold. Mm. I don't give a dang if the the person put down ten thousand dollars. You do not take it off until it's sold, man. I've seen too many people put money down, say they're gonna buy your house and they're gonna lease it out, and they don't close on it. This money is make sure you see it. The first sentence: a non-refundable application fee, and the earnest money fee also is non-refundable. So we charge like fifty dollar application fee because it costs us about thirty dollars to run all the information on the background and all that good stuff. So we pocket about twenty bucks on the little application, but we do the application fee, run all the background and stuff like that. That's non refundable. Then they put down a down payment. And then they just put down their address. We want copies of you know your driver license and all that good stuff. And copy your driver license, your W twos. All that good stuff. Got to have your social and all of that. So this is the main thing you want. Once you find a motivated, a motivated um, buyer, somebody who wants the property. So this one of the main documents you would need. We have a, another one here. Boom. This is our lease option agreement memo. So, so for, the application, the first one, that's when you're collecting the deposits from the tenant buyer. Tenant buyer, right. You got, got somebody ready to roll, and now they're bringing you some earnest money. I wouldn't take no less. Don't take any less than $1,000, guys. You want at least 1000 bucks. But, you know, we tell them, hey, the more, you, the more you can put down, the better. That's right. So you don't want to limit it mm -hmm. with only 1000 I wouldn't give them a particular number to say the, most you, the more you put down, the better. Your chances are of getting the house. Um, also, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't state you know do anything less than a thousand bucks. Now, this is our lease option agreement memo. This document here. This is what our seller will sign. So the same terms that they're going to give that they give to us, we're going to pass it down to our tenant buyer. Shit. That's my boy Billy. What's up, baby? Good lord, <laughs> dog. I'm sorry. Hey, he man. like our session, man. Billy, we got that CBD oil coming for you for you real soon. It's coming for your butt. <laughs> I'm gonna use the word. Sorry, class. Go ahead, Eddie. So this is, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is the lease option agreement memo, guys. This just state all the terms. Seller name, Bill. Our name, company name. The property address, purchase price amount, it's 350000 Terms of the lease, 24 months. Nice. Lease payments, 2100 Now, this tenant buyer, normally, we will say, normally, we will only give the, the home on the first month and the security deposit. But this seller here was a, a little savvy. They wanted a little more money down. So, you know, we had to come up just a little bit. It's not it's, it's not too far because you just say it's twenty one hundred. With his first month plus security deposit be forty two hundred. Right. Mm -hmm. But they wanted five thousand instead. So we don't care about giving them five thousand because you got to think about it, guys. If you're doing we don't take. Oh, this is another plus. Do not take any less than 5% down on your properties. Why? Because when people put less down, they tend to not give a crap about the house. Oh, and you, don't, you don't want that problem, man. You, you want to have good business practices with your um, sellers. But guess what? If this person don't buy again, they're going to call you up to find another tenant buyer. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't control if they buy or not. But you control... You can try to just put somebody good in there, and that sometimes that's one of the seller's objectives. So sometimes that's one of the seller's objectives. You know what happens if this tenant buyer don't, don't buy? What happens if this tenant buyer doesn't buy? Cool. How, do you, how do you be? How do you react? How do you reply to that, Eddie? What's your comeback to that one? The tenant buyer didn't buy. 
I said, no problem. We'll just find you another, another tenant, buy a free of charge. Free of charge. We'll take on that, we'll take on that responsibility and find you somebody as soon as possible. Once you find out they can't buy or they're not gonna buy, we will start marketing the property about the 11th month. About the 10th or 11th month that they're in there, just say if they're doing a 12 month agreement. About around the 10th or 11th month, you know if they're gonna buy or not. Mm -hmm. So we'll start marketing the property already. And we have a tenant buyer ready to replace them. Now wow. do now do the math. If we only giving them five thousand dollars, which I don't have a problem with, we're giving them five grand, guys. Five percent of three hundred fifty thousand is seventeen thousand and five hundred. So you subtract the five grand. We got to get a tenant buyer. I mean the seller. You make it twelve thousand five hundred dollars, guys, mm -hmm. on a pretty house that you didn't have to touch. You didn't have to um, use a hammer to get this check, do any renovations or nothing like that. You make $12,500, guys. Wow. Um, twelve five. And remember, we're going to raise that purchase price based on our numbers. So we're going to raise that purchase price up about between 5 and 7%. That's going to cover our um, fee. Yeah. That's cover our fee. You want to raise that purchase price up on the back end, and with these, with these, this um, wholesale lease option, like I said, you want to find a good buyer. Now, if this your subject to a property you're taking over subject to, it really doesn't matter if they qualify or not because this is your property. You're taking it. You're taking um, it's your property. So whether when you got a subject to whether they buy or not, it doesn't matter because they're paying for the payment anyway. Either way. Yeah, you're winning out no matter what. They're paying down your mortgage. Yeah, but you're on the hook for the for the payment when you buy a subject too, because you're the new owner. Right. With this right here, look, we, we tell them, hey, we're not making any payments until we get a tenant buyer into your property. Once right. we locate one that like your property, then the payments will start being made. Because if they put it on the market to sell it, guess what? A realtor not gonna pay their um monthly payment or no, so they gotta need to be responsible for their own their own uh, mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. That is cool. That is cool. So we're chugging along. You got that down payment. Do you link them up when it comes? So you get your money and you're gone. So they're gonna do business with each, with each other when it's time to close the end buyer's loan. Right. They're gonna they well they're gonna be dealing with each other because we're in and out on this transaction wholesale lease option. It's just like you wholesaling. The only difference, the seller and the buyer, you know, will be dealing with each other. And you want to make sure you close with an attorney. Close the end, this end transaction with a real estate attorney, guys. Close it with a real estate attorney. I believe that's why we don't have any rejection. Um, to be honest with you, Chris, about the down payment. Because I mean the attorney was there as the witness. He right. He 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 explained to you everything about the lease and about the option part because there's two parts when you're doing a wholesale lease option. It's a lease agreement, guys, and you got an option agreement. So you're it's leasing. The you're leasing the property, but you got an option to buy it. So you're gonna have two two contracts on your back end. That's right, class. You better keep the fence. Keep that damn fence, Eddie. Yeah, you better keep it. Your, <laughs> you better have your lease. A document and your option better be a different document. You don't want some judge saying you have a mortgage like instrument mixing all that stuff up in when you're selling. Right. And I believe that's why we don't have any property. I mean, any problems, Chris, but we close with attorney. I mean, the attorney sitting there and explain to the people, look, this was going on. You're leasing the property on this contract with this other one on the back end. You're buying this money is non-refundable if you do not buy. Simple like that. It normally take the attorney probably 10, 15 minutes to go through the document. Boom, you close. Closing is over with. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want the tenant buyer to actually get credit for the down payment, you have to have them wire the money into the attorney office. That way they can have proof that it was wired in when they was trying to buy. And sometimes so Rewind there, Eddie. Rewind there, Eddie. Because if I'm the cash, if I'm the buyer at the end, I want credit for my ten. I'm not gonna come up with another seventeen five when it's time for me to close. So how are we gonna give you that money? Send it. You can have that money wired into the attorney office. 
That way they have proof when it's time to buy that they put down $10,000. Please remember that one, class, because I promise you, when you get a tenant buyer that said they put $18,000 down, and then you think they're going to put another eighteen when it's time. Yeah, they like, God dang it, I just gave you 18. God dog. Somebody might get might be some problems with that one. Might be some bucking going on now. <laughs> so that's sharp, Eddie. So you're getting the tenant buyer to wire that money, and I've never done that. That's a good idea. All my, to me, man. I don't know. All my not well, all I, I've awesome. never had anybody. Well, maybe shit. 15 years, <laughs> probably two people bought. I mean, it's like so. I just started doing this like um about a year now because most people are not not buying. We're having them to wire the money in. We used to just go to the attorney office. They give me the cashier check. We no. out. <laughs> I have yet to have any Eddie. I've been doing this since '06. I haven't had not one. I had one client, a coaching client, have one closed, but I haven't had any. Well, yeah, they don't really buy, man, and you can't make these people buy, man. Come on, people yeah. buy. Shit, man, shit happens. This is the real world. So they may want to buy at one time. Now they don't want to. So, I yeah. mean, you can't make a person buy. But if they want to buy, hey, I'm giving you every opportunity to perform. Nice. That's so cool. I'm just thinking about people change their minds. Life happens. They get someone gets sick or they want to relocate. I mean, anything can happen to where they just say, I'm going to walk away from that 15000 Anything. So guys. You okay. definitely want to get into this because at my meeting, man, we was talking about it's a McDonald's down here um, in Cobb County. I forgot what street it's on. But now the McDonald's have, well, I don't eat that crap, but McDonald's have where you can pull up and you can enter what you want to eat in the drive through They got a long computer screen that you punch in what you want and then you just ride around to the front and pick it up. Then the yeah. one in, and the one in California, like two or three of them have robots. Wow. So with this artificial intelligence, this internet and these robots, guys, it's a lot of jobs in the middle getting ready to be cut out. Well, they're gone, dude. Yeah. So uh, I hope you guys wake up, man, and come to the new rich. Yeah. The new rich. Please Eddie. wake up. Please. Please. Thank I you. Thank you for saying that shit, man. It's a, I don't know if it's on your heart. I, it's on my heart heavily when I see people busting their hump to make twenty dollars an hour. I'm like, so much easier. It's an easier way, money. man. It's an easier way. It's always a way to make money, but you got to be able to mentally hit the switch, man, and go with what's going on now. Cause you still think of how you was a year or two ago. Mm. Your ass grad. <laughs> Let me just look at your eye. Your ass grass. <laughs> so, well, not only two years ago, I know people are thinking 20 years ago. They're still using a calculator to do stuff. Well, we're using mobile phones. Man, I got a student, man, for something. They, they older student. They want to take the contract down to the attorney office instead of faxing it in. Oh, my Lord, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had a guy call me yesterday. He was talking about he's doing handwritten postcards eddie handwritten po i'm like dude oh my goodness i mean you can just <laughs> upload this shit to the internet and because a post postcard class you're gonna see it whether it's handwritten or not you can't you don't have to open it you just look at it it's right there they don't, people don't care if it's handwritten or not wow that I mean i love you know I'm, I'm glad the dude was doing something but eddie man we are we're gonna have to help dude we have such a big mountain to climb brother eddie so a lot of people stuck but stuck in time, man. Mm -hmm. And you can always tell a person stuck in time. They start talking about what they used to doing in the 90s. And then, man, five, 10 years ago, that shit old, man. man that's play it out. Step your game up. It's <laughs> over. It's over, right? I don't even want to hear about it. I know my yeah, people talk about the war they were in. I don't even talk like talk about the school I went to. It was so long ago. What yeah, are you doing man. right now? Now. Today. Now. Now, you living back in yesterday, chances are mentally you mess you off up here mentally. Not yeah. you retarded, but you just <laughs> you, 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 you got you got you gotta increase, man. You gotta learn new information. Calculate the brain a little bit. So learn class. new information and apply it. I like you that. You can learn all the information you want. But if you're not applying it, it's useless. 
to learn new information and apply the information. Apply application. That's challenging, man. Implementation for me has been, I'm just learning how to kind of implement, but it's, it's challenging, Eddie. When you're used to, you get into that, uh, what Napoleon Hill calls cosmic rhythm. It's just like you're waking up every day. You're doing it in this system, the brushing teeth, getting ready. Habit. Well, we get in a habit, the body. They say really when we get into the habits, it's our body controlling us oh. instead of our mind controlling us. Mm -hmm. Our body is used to getting up, drinking coffee. Our body is used to rushing to work. Our body is used to getting to work and doing things a certain way. Cosmic instead of we take control with our mind, boom. I'm not going to do this today. I'm not going to play with that phone as soon as I wake up. I'm going to wow. meditate and you know plan my day, see what I'm, I'm, I'm going to do today, and just have a great day today. Nice. This assignment memo is where we get our paper. Oh yeah. Ching ching. Class, you gotta you better get this. You can get this. Eddie has the course down there. You know, it, it's all built in there. If we they can get that in the course, correct? Right. And you gotta think about this too, guys. What's different from a wholesale versus a wholesale lease option? You don't have to get a seller in their earnest money. Even though on our earnest money, we don't give on a on a wholesale in the ugly house, we only give ten dollars. But period, wholesale lease option, sandwich lease option, no earnest money. They sign an agreement. That's that. Gotcha. Gotcha. I like that, Eddie. Because some people worry about, well, what if the seller want $500 earnest money, $1,000 earnest money? With this wholesale lease option, guys, boom. You don't have to give up nothing. They just sign that piece of paper. You're in business. Now your job is to locate a tenant buyer. Also, and of course, we got the sandwich lease option. Where you want to stay in and get that residual income, because that residual income is what's going to what's going to replace your current job income, where you can get out and do more wholesale lease options. Do more wholesale lease options or whatever you want to do. That shit, hang out in the middle of the day at home or whatever. Yeah, I mean you can do one of these a month, man. You're cool. You see that one right there, twelve thousand. If you you're not scared to play in the big boy area, and some some places three hundred fifty thousand is nothing. California, yeah. that's a dump. Yeah, <laughs> a two bedroom, not even, yeah. not even two bedroom. Three hundred. Now I know in Texas you can't do wholesale lease options, so you're in Texas, guys. I'm sorry, you blew it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't do um wholesale lease option, but you can do agreement for deed, contract for I deed, mean, or they just buy it. Yeah, contract for deed. I mean, it's 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 a way around it. So yep, yep. I love it, Eddie. Let's get to some Q&A class. And I just want to remind you that this stuff is in Eddie's link below. And don't forget my YouTube master classes. The link's below. Go ahead and register for tomorrow. You do some Q&A, Eddie? Yes, sir. We got a little, I got a little time. You know we've been here for an hour already? Shit, that went by fast. Uh, a lot of leases. <laughs> oh, Daniel wants to know, are there a lot of lease options to wholesale? Is there what? Are there a lot of lease options to wholesale? Yeah, I would say yes, because you don't really have competition. I see it. In my market, I'm going to be honest with you, I probably only know about three or four investors, man. This is in Atlanta that's really doing it. Now, it may be more, but, you know, from checking out different posts and different stuff, I don't see too many people doing it. Jerry, yeah, just email us if you want some training. Email either one of us, you think, whoever you're jabbing with. Piotr, I just watching you guys about two months ago and closed two subject two deals. Well, what was that? I think it's Piotr Salon. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Hey, we want to interview you, so let us know. Reach out yeah. to me and Chris so we can yeah. interview you. Either one, you'll bring you on here, man. I already got them sold on lease options. That's why I wanted to say we don't buy, well, typically we don't buy the way we sell class. We buy a certain way, then we sell a different way. The diff two different things. Nice. That's really oh, cool. one thing too. Remember, guys, when you buy on the lease option, you can only sell on the lease option. Yeah, you can't, can't sell buy it. on the lease option and sell on the owner finance because you don't own the property. Or subject to you can't sell subject. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you definitely can't do that. No. <laughs> Uh, Daniel wants to put a live. Yeah, we're working on a live class now. Daniel, be the topic on the master class is YouTube and internet marketing. Uh, AJ Stancato, YouTube and internet marketing. I want people to me and Eddie talk. You know, it's weird. We talk about real estate a lot, but we really talk about this internet thing. And internet is living, it's breathing into uh, real estate. Eddie, would you say? I mean, they're almost like intertwined now. 
Oh yeah, it's it's, it's it. Hey, better catch up, man. I'm gonna show y'all tonight how this internet thing. It's my income. It's my business has gone up four thousand percent this year. Everyone. <laughs> Daniel said he the manager and customer. He pocket it down to the bank. <laughs> Daniel went hey, to the and the CEO, <laughs> president too, uh, and he, chairman. Daniel Baird wants to know how do you check someone's credit, brother Eddie? Well, we got a shit. I think um tenant shit. I don't know. Email me, man. I got a website we use. I can't keep up with all this stuff, but email me. Info and Mr. Transaction Engineer. Your email address is in the video description, dog. Anybody want I put okay. it in there this time, Eddie. I'm on the ball. Okay. Email us. Email me. Yeah, I'll send you the link. Eddie's got it's that. It's about 20, 30 bucks. Would you suggest Daniel also wants to know would you suggest using a realtor to find expired listings for this type of strategy, Eddie? Oh yeah. I will look for expired listing 60 days out. 60 days. Expired listing 60 days out, man. That class. You're in the game. I wouldn't do nothing any sooner, guys, because most people, when they expire, they think it's the real tour, so they're going to go get another real tour. Mm -hmm. Get another real tour, and they're going to see that it's the house or the price. <laughs> yep. I love it when I go look at them and they've got boom, different. Go the different list, like it's, like it's the real tour. It's the damn house or your price. You look at the history, right? It's just bam, 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 bam. They've been listening like crazy, like hotcakes. <laughs> 30 days. <laughs> Eddie, uh, Beezer, what up? Beezer, wants, she wants to know when do you do a host? When do you know to do a wholesale lease option, uh, Eddie? When they won't do a subject to or owner finance. Well, okay, well, damn. Let me. You want to get it sold? Let me put a tenant buyer in the house for you. Yeah. Same process on Beezer. You got my course, Beezer. Shoot my email. I'm here. You know we like this mono e mono. <laughs> She's cool. You. She goes, <laughs> definitely ride or die. Daniel wants to know, where do you find your tenant buyers for this type of stuff, Brother Eddie? Well, you just got to market. Put it on all the free sites online. Put you some signs out there. Rent to own rent. or no bank qualifying or what are we doing? No bank qualifying, no credit check. Come on with that money, baby. Oh Bring Lord. that money. Right yeah. I don't think, wait till Daniel does his one, when his phone, I, you know, I don't, well, we don't take the phone calls, but I have done it just to kind of test your phone is going to blow off the damn hook. Chain, man. You're not going to be able to handle it. No. You put that I, no qualifying, man. No credit check. Shit. It's going so, down. I've done this in four states so far, especially in Indiana, where the values are so low. I've got a client. And, and Eddie, the values out there, man, they're getting mortgage payments for three, dollars $400, including taxes and insurance, my friend. Right. Tax, the values are so low. Hey Lulu, you guys got an off the chain channel. Eddie, would it be would could you get a limited power of attorney on oh the, on that deal you were talking about, Eddie, that you did a sandwich lease option? Would you get a power of attorney on something like that? Uh, because it's challenging when you're doing a buying on a lease option as opposed to yeah, you, they they're not gonna give you no if you were buying on the subject to or on the finance. <laughs> I mean, that's part of the package. But if you're just buying on the lease purchase and selling on the lease purchase, no, nah, they nine times out of ten, they're not gonna give it to you. Gotcha. I'm finding most sellers, because we run across a couple of sell sellers. Most of them that's really, you know, up in age, they're not really doing the lease purchase thing. They want to cash out. Because yeah, they know in any amount of time they may kick the bucket. So hey, they want to cash out, get the money and ball a little longer before they die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Daniel was asking, "How much is the application contract? Is that the oh the application? Is that a what? What do you mean, Daniel? Is that how much? How much is the application contract? I guess how much are you getting when you do the application contract, Eddie? The application contract. Yeah. You said how much is it? Yeah. The first five people I give it for free, but I look." The hundred people don't email me about their goddamn go application contract. Oh no, he wants to know how much do you get from the oh how much for the document. I'm sorry, yeah, he wants to know about that. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Email go. me, I'll give it to you for free. Only That's the nice. first five. Now I can't be on my laptop every second. Oh I got shit to do. Mitch <laughs> Rich. 
Mitch, hey, Mitch, how did you come up with the purchase price, Eddie? Is it today's ARV or future ARV? Well, whatever the seller want at market value. Now, we're not giving them more than what the house comp out to because we need to be able to cover our part. So if it comps out at 350, then Mr. Seller, you're going to get 350. So we don't care about giving them full price, but they got to give us our terms. Yeah. You know, they got to give us, okay, we'll give you 350, but you're going to only get first money security deposit. Nice. Now, like I said, nice. we have some savvy um, sellers that may want a little more, but I'm not going no more than like a 60 40 split because we got to do all the work. Mm -hmm. And there's got to be a house that's worth it. Pretty house. A pretty house. I have gave up 40%. So, mm -hmm. hey, 60% of something is better than zero. That's right. Nothing. 100% of nothing is nothing. <laughs> Calvin wants to know what is the $5,000 you're giving to the seller? What is that for? When you get that's their down payment. Gotcha. Calvin, you got that. So he's giving a down payment only after he collects the down payment, Calvin. Right. Nothing up front, guy. You don't come out nothing up front. And we do the double closing. So we got to give this seller some money. We double close the back end. Calvin Darville. Hey, he wants to know how do you determine your monthly payment when you're setting up the contract, Eddie, on the lease? Well, it's it's up to um since we're in and out, I mean, it gotta be market rate. Or Lord, you know, we it's totally up to the seller because we're in and out. And we're doing a sales lease option. We will want it for the mortgage payment. That way we can raise the price and get collect that money in the middle. But since we're in and out of this transaction, whatever the seller wants, as long as it's market rate, you know, it's, it's good. Gotcha. Uh -huh. And, Hello. you know, the people that I market to, you know, they're going to let you know if it's in, you know, a right price or not. A right yeah, monthly right. payment. Right? But they're not going to even want the house if it's too high. Right. But the good thing about it is I usually tell them when I'm selling on a lease option, when I'm selling, I just opened up with Miss Smith. Well, you know, typically throughout history, real estate has appreciated 3% a year. You know, right. then you go into, you can deal with the prices. And you, if you're given them three, four years, then you can negotiate that appreciation in the price. Right. Do you have a script if they say, well, why is the price so high? Shit, I don't have. I never had that problem, Chris. I've only had it one time. Yeah, one time. they want that house, man. Most of the time, they drooling. But by the time you get in front of them, man, they are drooling. They're ready. Eleanor wants to know: You raise the purchase price on the back end, even though you're wholesaling it, Eddie. Yeah, you got to cover your fee. You don't want that fee to affect your seller fee. So you want your seller, if he want the whole three fifty, you want him to be able to get his three fifty at the end of the year or two years. So we raise it up to let's say three sixty. To cover our fee now it may be a little extra they say um you raise it up to 360 you only get seven thousand boom you get seven thousand go to hip pocket now you go back to yourself hey mr shell i got them up an extra three thousand for you how you think they're gonna like you they're gonna love you brother. Oh, man plus their mortgage is getting paid down correct correct every single month calvin wants to know how do you determine oh i already asked that all right class Getting hot. It's like 82 degrees out here, brother. Oh, it is. It's got to be beautiful down there. Hey, Patrick. It's about a good 70, 75, man. It might be about 75, 80. I'm going to get me a jog in, man. Man, it's just oh, that's so good. The Roundup family. Hey, my brother's here. Hey, Ronnie. Ronnie, what's up, brother? The car I still got to talk to you, man. About that car. Yeah, he's. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to ball run. I'm ready to pull that thing out now <laughs> for the summer. Class, please. When do, Calvin wants to know, when doing the strategy, what would keep a seller from just keeping you out of the deal and going out to find his own tenant buyer? You could do that. They don't want to put up. Now you got some little slick sellers that may do it, but most of them don't even know where to start. So they're going to work every day, right? They're going to work at eight o'clock yeah, in the morning. And five. And, five, and they definitely can't handle all the calls. Come on, man. How long do you think that'll last? They'll be pulling out their freaking hair. Because I'm telling you, you do your marketing right, that phone don't stop ringing. It's going <laughs> to ring, ring, ring. I put on my ad, don't call after eight. I mean, they be calling at 11 o'clock. They still call. Heck yeah, they don't care. <laughs> Stay aggressive now. <laughs> <laughs> They still call, man. 
Patrick, hey, so Patrick Cruz, do you record the option part on either side or the buyer until the end of either side, seller or buyer until the end of the terms? No, we're not recording anything. He's gone. He's gone, Patrick. He's gone down the street. Twinette, hey, Twinette, who pays the seller's arrears? Example, if the seller's behind 8000 They shouldn't be behind. If they're behind 8000 We we got a different um, conversation. We're not talking about lease purchase after that. But if you're behind, we talk about subject two, baby. Or on the finances. That's it. I'm not, do not, guys, do a freaking lease purchase with somebody who's behind. Because if they're not paying now, do you think they're going to pay then? No. Mm, that's a great point, Eddie. Heck no, man. Because they're going to take that guess, guess, Something happens, guess who um, that tenant buyer going to be looking at? You. you. <laughs> I didn't think about that, Eddie. Heck yeah. So if you take yourself too, then you're dealing directly with the lender. Right. You're in control. Nice. So, and, and one thing good about it, guys, the lease purchase is good for, if you don't have extra money to do a subject to, to catch up back payments and all that stuff, you can still make you some money. Or you can do a sandwich lease option and stay in and collect that fee in the middle. But with the sandwich lease option, you're just telling me you're taking on all the responsibilities mm -hmm. and everything yourself, all the responsibility, all the repairs, everything you're going to take, you're going to take over, um, that headache, collect the payments, all that stuff. Wow, we got another letter uh, offering from Danny. I mean, from Daniel. Thank you, brother Daniel. I'm glad you are getting this stuff in, my brother. Daniel, thank you. Thank you for your love offering. Thank you, friend. Okay. Uh, good gracious, these things are coming in. That's a lot of them. Yeah, they're coming in. Beezer. Uh, people want to do or go in their own way. We'll learn from their mistakes. That's true. Theo, hey, Theo. Can you talk about a little bit about if he's buying and selling on a sandwich lease option, does he need to close both the contract with the seller and the contract with the buyer with an attorney, Eddie? Oh, just on the back end. Oh, the sale side. Yeah. Gotcha. When, you, when you're selling to your tenant buyer, when you're closing out with your tenant buyer, because yeah, you don't bring, you ain't bringing, you aren't bringing any money in until the tenant buyer brings his money in. Right. So it's not like you closing yet. You'll remember that you want to make sure your tenant buyer is bringing that, unless you're going to pay for it. I guess you could. Yeah. I guess you could. It's up to you. We don't do that, but you know that to each his own. SJ, if a seller files, I'm guessing bankruptcy, and is discharged from the bankruptcy, okay, they are no longer responsible for the mortgage payments. If you want to buy the house from them, can you still sub to it? Yeah. We sub to, we sub to um, properties that have been done chapter seven, everything. I can't believe it. I mean, that is amazing to me. I mean, I, I would think hey. the bank eventually is going to come. They're going to eventually the bank's going to say, hey, what's going on? No, they'll let you start making other back payments. The crazy thing is they supposed to the debt's supposed to be wiped out, but they still collect the money. I can't believe this. That's amazing. Mitch, how did you come up with the purchase price? Oh, we already did that one. How did I get back up there? Nia, hey Nia, can I sell a subject to property if my name is on the deed but not on the loan? Oh, I love that one. That's my favorite. All day is your house. All day, yes. Your name I on the deed, it, you don't own it. You own it. Doesn't it doesn't matter who name's on the mortgage. You're the big boss. <laughs> yes, Nia, you in the driver's seat. And don't forget, you get to offer, oh my goodness, Eddie, she is so much in the driver's seat. She oh, gets yes. to sell a house where you own, you get to sell the house and you get to sell the finance, and Nia, you get you're giving them two pieces of value. You're giving them some value. Shoot, that's a beast. How much do you guys? Dark Calvin wants to know how much do you spend for marketing for tenant buyers, Eddie? Man, only thing you have is signs. So what is that? Probably two hundred, two fifty, hundred, two hundred bucks, two three hundred bucks. You put those signs on, man. You know, the cops tried to get me this weekend, too, with my signs. I, I recorded it. So, I, matter of fact, I need to release that video. You did. 
cops came after you. <laughs> what they say, Chris? They said, look, you black, you know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't say that. But I did have my camera on, Eddie. I'm like, I'm recording this. I got it hey, all on. Hey, you better record them these days, man. They're a little swift now. But they're still they're swift on the draw. Even the with the camera on, yeah. I'm like, uh, he was cool though. He didn't mess with me. But they don't mess with me though, man. I don't, you know, I don't I'm the corny guy. I don't have the alpha male, you know, get out of here. Troy Williams, what up, dog? Can you find wholesaling lease options on Zillow? Eddie. Yeah. Yep. See. One thing about marketing, guys, you how can I explain them? That's why it's best to be like a, a transaction engineer, know how to handle multiple deals. Because it's not a specific list you can just market to for specific deals most of the time. You just market and whatever comes in, make it. If you got the knowledge, you can make it into a deal. Great deals are made. They don't make themselves. You gotta remember that. Yeah, you gotta make it. You gotta you gotta let the you got to help the seller see how they're going to benefit from it. There you go. Once you convince the seller, then you can dang near do any kind of deal. Ivan uh, wants to know about how the seller can get the credit with for the future lender again. Ivan, I don't want to. I don't want to backtrack, man. You can rewind it and watch that later, my friend. I'm sorry, but I would do that. But we're we're, we're it's already three ten right now. Derek, what's up, my dog? How would you pay a real tour if they wanted to work with you in doing the lease option? That's a good question, Eddie. Um, well, you got to make sure the money you get on that back end is going to cover what you got to give to that seller. And you know, you can, you, just say, for example, you're only going to get 10 on the back end. Then you don't want to promise the realtor you got to give them that you're going to give them 10,000 and you got to give the seller already three or four thousand for the mortgage payment and for first month and uh, their down payment. So you got to make sure your numbers are right. I probably offer the realtor probably two grand or three grand, but Flat they're pay. all going to be based on that 5% that you're going to get from that lease purchase. So just get the house, the property value, multiply by 5%. That's usually your, your um where your that spread is. And you know, work your numbers like that, reverse engineer. There you go. Beezer, June of month. Be -be -be Beezer, that is so cool. Uh, Chris June, that's my birthday, Beasley. So you got to make sure you definitely fired up in June. <laughs> Chris, my tenant buyer gets about 7,500 calls a day. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's not about right. Oh, yeah, Daniel. He already went over how much he sells this contract for. He went, he'll give you the first five people is free. If not, I guess it's going to be in the in the course down there. Can they just can they just buy that that document, Eddie? I don't know. Which one? The application. application. Yeah. Uh, Email Eddie on that. I don't know. You're yeah, right. man. Go get a nine hundred one. I have a seller that owns a property. A wholesale cash offer won't work. What's the best purchase exit strategy under these circumstances? Hmm. Shoot, that is a go getter. Uh, we need way more data on that. You want to touch that one, Eddie? I don't understand the question. Yeah, we need so much more data. I don't know. Rosanna, hey. Oh, yeah, Monday. We have Rosanna on our broadcast. I forgot about that. She's going to be talking about Section 8 tenants. She actually works for the, the Housing Redevelopment Authority in her area. We're going to be talking about the Housing Choice Voucher Program at 3 o'clock on Monday. Nia, What's do, up, you, Rosanna? do you find that it is hard? And she is like a like a model too. You're like this. Oh yeah. Do you find and she that she got a door to be turned up, man? What a door! To... <laughs> we be cracking up, man. <laughs> do you find it hard, Nia, for people to have ten thousand for a lease option payment, Eddie? No. Uh -uh. If you got a house in a good area, you shouldn't have any problems. Now you got a house in the war zone where people gotta have pistols when they go to sleep. In trouble. Your chance of 10 grand is very slim, unless it's a dope boy. Good <laughs> you don't want to deal with that. <laughs> uh, 
CC64, when you raise the purchase price, Eddie, are you raising the purchase price or just the down payment money? Raising the purchase price. Which gives you the down payment money. Right. Lulu and Bella, they got an off the chain. They off the hook, too. They got a pit bull. Man. It's a crazy dog. What's the best list for this type of deal? Pre foreclosures, tax delinquents. I mean, I don't know. Go ahead, Eddie. Not pre foreclosures because they're behind. Remember, you're doing a wholesale lease option. You don't want nothing that's behind. You want the person to have they be, to be current on their mortgage. Gotcha. What if your tenant buyer stops paying? TB Speedy wants to know that, Eddie. Eddie? Kick their ass out. Well, you you wholesaled it. Are you still even in the picture? Well, I'm presuming your seller's going to call you and say, help me with this. And you got to think, guys. Oh, one important thing. When you start marketing your property, make sure you build a, a buyer's list. People who got money, make sure you build your buyer's list because guess what? Just say you got three or four more people that got eight to ten grand to put down on the house. Now, boom, you just go look for some more properties in that area. And now you done made another 30 grand, another 20 grand. So please build that buyer's list. I can't tell you how many closings we do off one house sometimes. But we got the list. We got the people ready. They got the money. Wow. Now all we got to do is find the property. Uh, Bob, Bob purchased, oh no, Bob purchased homes. Are you putting the home into a land trust on a sandwich lease option, Eddie? Oh, uh, no. It, nope. You're not buying you don't own the property, guys. You don't own the property on the sandwich lease. Not buying nothing. Remember, you got that lease at the end. Sandwich lease. You're still leasing no matter what. Yes, sir. Lulu and Bella wants to know three deckers, I guess a three unit, are big in their area. Can this type of deal be used for that as well? I mean, if you could sell the whole place. Yeah, to do that. The owner own the whole place, or they may own one and one half of it. You can still do a lease purchase on it. They don't have to own the whole place. I'll take that back. Has to be different. It tax it. It had to be different tax parcels, Eddie. You can't sell a million. Yeah, they can't be. Yeah, like if it's a duplex, one person own, you can't lease out one nah, side. That'd be both. To of buy. You know what I'm saying? If they own the whole place, yes. Or if they own one half of it, and somebody else own one half, then you could sell that one half. Let's think about it. If you got a tri unit and one person wants to live in it, yeah, the lease would be for occupancy. So they had to. <clears throat> I want to buy on a lease option. A tri well, a trap, a trap place usually. Somebody's going to live in it with one that lease. person owns it. Yeah, one person owns all three. So yeah, Lulu, you have to yeah. have to own one person. Troy Williams to find the seller on wholesaling lease options. Can you find them on Zillow? Oh, we already covered that. Jonathan, when would you when would you do a loan mod during the bankruptcy process or from foreclosure process? I'm going through that right now. No, that's another topic, man. Yeah, that's shit. You try to get me. That's too deep right now. I, I don't. I can't handle it right now. TV. <laughs> oh, Daniel. Joyce. If they surrender the house, can you still work with the seller? Hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't understand that one. Yeah, I gotta see Rose down. She's gonna be on there. Um I got my little bell that goes off, Chris. Okay. Let me, let me write it down and make sure the 3 p.m. Yep. Jonathan, can you get bankruptcy list from the tax assessor? Heck no. He doesn't know where to start. He says, Can you where do you get bankruptcy list from? Uh go to Melissa Data. Gotcha. Clay Burks, if I didn't have the money to do a flip, I could wholesale a house to yourself. You can. Yep, absolutely. I've had my boy used to do that. Get a house under contract for 50, wholesale it to your LLC, get that 10,000, use that 10,000 for your down payment. So many ways to flip this thing. That's right. Use it as money. Clay, you're thinking, dog. Thinking. CC64. If I sign my contract and have to raise the price, do I get the difference between what the seller gets and what the signed purchase price is, Eddie? Shit, what you say, Chris? Come on, focus, <laughs> Eddie. Come on, we're out, we're out, man. Eddie. All right, we're gone. We're, we're, we're confident, man. I guess hey, it's a lot of questions left, Chris. 
No, nah, you're right. Let me get out of here. I'll say, do this last one, Eddie, and then we'll we'll go do our outro. Make sure you subscribe. We'll do the outro, and then we'll get out of here. Last question. Unless you got a, you got a, uh, if you have, unless you want to do a super chat, this is the last question. We got to get out of here. So he wants to understand the money you get on a on a wholesale lease option is the difference between what the seller gets and what your sales price is for. That's what he wants to know. Right. That's it. You got it. Your down payment that you get from the seller, and what, I mean, from the tenant buyer and what you That's give to the seller. Final thoughts, Eddie, on wholesaling lease options. Wholesaling lease options, Eddie. Chris, you need to bench press, hit that brick a couple of times uh, uh, for your workout. Wow. Yeah, baby, look at my boy, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you are crazy. Y'all should hear Eddie off the air. I wish I could, I can't record uh, uh, <laughs> just talking. <laughs> <laughs> final thoughts sandwich these option dogs hey final thoughts guys please add an extra strategy to your investment tool uh, business add an extra tool to your business guy please don't get stuck in one strategy because when it tanks and you only know one way i'm telling you man you're gonna be wiped out yeah, like I, a lot of investors have come back now, but when that market tank, man, I only know maybe one or two people that stayed in the game. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys learned from my from my mentor and your mentor. Yeah. So we learned how to do all the transactions. So we was cool. You know, it don't matter what the doggone market does. We ready no matter what. Up, so, down, left, right, forwards, or even sideways, Eddie. You can make. Yeah, I don't care. I'm ready for whatever. I can't wait till it tank. I love it. You're right. You're right. Class, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, smash the thumbs up, and tomorrow, 2 o'clock, I put the link in. I'm going to be doing a YouTube and Internet Marketing Masterclass. Please join the new rich. Come on over. Join us. The new rich, Timothy Ferris, coined this with the four-hour work week. Make money in our sleep. Doesn't matter where you're at. Making your income doesn't matter the time or the location. When I learned that you can make more money in an hour than some people make in a month. Whoa. Remember that one, Eddie? But Eddie does it too. He just doesn't teach it. I, now I you get me excited. Now you get me excited. <laughs> Eddie, can you please tell hey. these people how important the internet, adding in, internet to their life is, Eddie? Please, just help them. Man, guys, if you don't add this dog on social media to make you money, <laughs> stop looking on, on there just to look at your boring friends and all that bull crap they got going on. Make some Who money. What? Game of Thrones, media. that crap. I haven't watched. What are people watching now? Walking Dead. Cut that crap off, man. Man, make some money on this internet, man. Find you a product and sell it. I don't care if it's your grandmama's shoes. Put them on there and sell them. <laughs> I can't wait to so, go over this class. I'm so excited about this. Eddie, when we don't leave, because I got to give you that link so you can um, help promote it. I'm okay. prayerfully, I want to change the front. I want to change your financial status. I got that application this morning and I'm like a 50 year old man making $10. I haven't made $10 an hour since. Should have been the 1990s. Eddie. But you know, Chris, man, people got to change their um, paradigm, man. You got to change your paradigm. You can't be, well, this is how I always used to do it. Or this is how grandma and them I always used to do it. Wow. Look, that shit over with. You better make a drastic change if you want to survive in this new world we're living in, or you're going to be out of gas, man. You're going to be in trouble. Mm. But you got to do a paradigm shift. And they say normally we don't do a paradigm shift or make a drastic change until something drastically happened to us that make us do a change. So mm -hmm. don't wait for something drastic having to make that change. You just just got to get fed up and say, look, today is a new day. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start and I'm going to stick with it. Just stick with it consistently. <laughs> So the link for that master class is below class. Join up. I'm, 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 it's it's, it's going to be half off today only to midnight. Tomorrow the price will double. Three, two o'clock tomorrow. And then you got to learn the social media and you're going to have to understand how the internet work, works. And I'm not talking about you have to go create all these products either. You don't. Even, I'm not talking about none of that. And I'm not talking about spending no money on advertising. I have made my... Both of us, Eddie, have you spent any money on advertising? No. Uh -uh. Zero. I spent zero and we're up four thousand percent on business class i love you thank you for letting me serve don't forget jessica siegel on friday also matter of fact i gotta talk to her at 3 30. eddie i'll see you soon class love you peace i right, love you guys